Hello everyone and welcome to another news coolum video and plug side chat. In today's uh, plug side chat I'd like to uh, talk about uh, level two charging. It's an issue that I, I think I think a lot of automatic manufacturers need to start taking a, a little bit more seriously. Now this is something that I think Tesla gets right but I think a lot of other automakers miss the mark on this and uh, essentially what it is is how how powerful the onboard level two chargers really need to be for electric vehicles and I kind of want to speak to what I think are the best practices or the the standards that we should all be working toward um, and it's going to become more of an issue right now the Bolt EV is really the only other large battery vehicle other than Tesla and like I said I think Tesla is getting this right and the upcoming iPACE is, is another example. So the Bolt EV comes with a 32 amp onboard level two charger that recharges the battery in about nine hours, uh, a little, little less than that. And the iPACE is going to come with a similarly sized onboard level two charger that will charge it in about uh, 13 hours, I believe is the, the quoted rate. And uh, so to me, that's a little bit slow. Um, it's especially bad for the iPACE, but it's also not acceptable for the Bolt EV. Uh, a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack charging at 7 to 7.7 .7 kilowatts uh, just takes way too long to charge. And, uh, and it's not even for home use. See, the thing is home, it really doesn't matter. You're going to be parking overnight. Uh, it can be whatever rate below that you want, whatever charger you set up in your garage. But I think moving forward, it would be good to set the standard of trying to get batteries uh, on electric vehicles to charge through level two in about four to six hours, six hours being the longest. And I think this is going to help uh, in a number of ways. Uh, one with electric vehicle adoption, but two with uh, with businesses and things of that nature. Now, for light duty vehicles, really, I don't foresee a need of ever having more than about 120 kilowatt hours of onboard uh, um, energy. And, and the reason for that is, you know, the the Model S and the Model X they're relatively inefficient as vehicles go. And they're bordering on heavy duty vehicles. Uh, but you take like a Model 3, if you gave it the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, that comes as an option in the Model S, you're looking at a vehicle that could easily go over 400 miles, about 400 to 450 miles. And I do think that's about the sweet spot for electric vehicles. But now let's think about that in terms of level two charging. Uh, the level two charging standard, the J1772, will support up to 19 kilowatts of charging power uh, out of two uh, out of an 80 um, amp service, 80 amps at 240 volts, and that should be a standard that should be leveraged moving forward. Uh, and you know that 19 kilowatt rate would only take about six hours, the upper end, but only take about six hours to charge a hundred and 20 kilowatt hour battery pack from zero to full. I mean, again, put a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack in the Bolt EV that's currently getting by on a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and you have nearly a 500 mile car. Uh, so, I mean, the math isn't necessarily that simple. There are other considerations, but that's why I'm saying it, the, the, the technology is already in place to support this four to six hour um, standard. And I think this comes with a number of positive implications. Uh, the first is it, it makes it easier for businesses. Uh, they don't have to install three phase power. They don't have to make any sort of special considerations. Uh, charge points already making a charger that will split an 80 amp uh, uh, charge through two different ports, essentially making it so you can pull into to one of them if you if your vehicle supports that 80 amp uh, level two charging, you'll charge really, really quickly. If another vehicle pulls in, it will split that power with it. So there's really no loss. Um, and and again, these are good implementations for certain businesses better, much better than DC fast charging. If you own a Chuck E. Cheese style, Dave and Buster style 
sports bar style establishment, uh, you don't want customers there for 30 minutes to an hour like you would at other restaurants. You want them there for two hours, three hours possibly. Uh, and these chargers make in many ways more sense than a DC uh, charger would make uh, for, for the same implementation. Uh, some, some of the other things are, uh, you know, it, it provides a, an option that isn't currently available for dealerships and service centers. Now I know those are um, sometimes bad words within the EV community, but we have to, to live with the fact that right now, uh, most automakers can't uh, separate from their dealership model. They just can't. And a lot of people are employed and it's a big you know, impact on local business, local economy. And having things like these chargers, one gives an automaker the option of upselling, right? So a Bolt EV could come with a standard 32 amp charger, but if you want one, you could maybe update it, upgrade it to a 64 amp, uh, which I think would be ideal for something like the Bolt EV. It gives them a chance to upsell an option. And if you make it modular, it gives dealerships the, um, the opportunity or the service centers the opportunity to sell it to customers after the fact. So, so maybe you don't want to purchase it one. Maybe you bought it used and you want to upgrade it. Well, this gives a service center a way to make more money selling aftermarket chargers, gives them the opportunity to do that. Um, it, it, for those of you who haven't seen it, there's a website, UpgradeMyLeaf.com. You can check that out. That's what a lot of uh, older leaf owners were doing. And again, this has a huge impact on the usability from a customer base because, or from the customer perspective, because you're, you're talking about leafs now. If you do this upgrade, you can charge on a level two, uh, fully charge in, in an hour and a half. That That's a big deal. Bigger battery uh, vehicles won't ever get that high. But, you know, the dip, the difference that you're talking about is uh, the older Leaf or a Volt with a 3.3 onboard kilowatt charger, you're getting maybe, you know, 12 miles an hour of charging. Uh, the, the upper standard, an 80 amp, you're, you're getting, you know, you're getting far more than that. You're getting close to 80 miles of, of uh, charge, um, 80 miles charged per hour. And that's a big difference. It, and it saves time. It allows people to jockey between spaces, uh, hotels that offer valet services. So I think a lot of the automakers, if you're starting to make bigger battery vehicles, uh, start to look to hit that standard of um, a four to six hour maximum charge time uh, at the fastest rates for, for your level two onboard chargers. I, I think it's going to be a big service to your customers. It's going to be a way of adding extra revenue, and it's going to make implementing a useful infrastructure a lot easier. Uh, road trips aren't going to be as dependent on a DC fast charging infrastructure. Uh, if people want to stop for two hours and, and they're getting 150 to 200 miles of range, that's a big deal and it's gonna be very helpful for, for a lot of drivers. So, uh, you know, let me know what your thoughts are on this. I, I think there's a lot of opportunities here, a lot of chances. Um, you know, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps out the channel. Uh, again, I'm curious to hear what you think, um, but I, I think this is an important thing that automakers need to start considering um, as they start making bigger battery, longer range electric vehicles. All right, well, thank you for watching.